In the annals of military history, legends of Panzer Aces in their powerful Tiger and Panther tanks, have etched themselves into the collective memory of World War II enthusiasts. But hidden amidst the shadows of these heavyweights, are lesser-known tales of courage and daring, that revolve around Germany's less formidable Panzers, which spearheaded the Blitzkrieg during the early years of the war. This is the story of a Panzer III, a lesser celebrated warrior of the Panzer Corps, and its crew, whose remarkable exploits unfolded in the early days of autumn of 1941. On September 6, 1941, it was raining, as the motorized troops and tanks of the 4th Panzer Division gathered at Korop, under the command of Colonel Eberbach. The mission of Battle Group Eberbach, which included elements of the 35th Panzer Regiment, the 34th Motorcycle Battalion, and elements of the 49th Anti-Tank Battalion and the 103rd Artillery Regiment, was to advance through Kirillskoj and Atyusha, and force a crossing of the Siam River near Baturin. The 33rd Rifle Regiment was to advance through Altanoka, and assist the river crossing to the left of the battle group. The fighting started with an artillery duel at 800 meters. Motorcycle troops and motorized infantry seized the initial Soviet positions on the low and extended heights near Kirillskoj. Major von Lochert's 1st Battalion of the 35th Panzer Regiment then moved through this gap and advanced toward Baturin via Tusha. The motorcycle forces and motorized infantry, on the other hand, were unable to follow the tanks, because Soviet resistance unexpectedly flared up again deep in enemy positions. The tanks advanced alone. They came across a massive Soviet column of wheeled and tracked vehicles, on the main route to Baturin. The fighting started. Watch out, Schwartz. Lance Sergeant Hermann Bix cautioned the driver, his voice tense, as the tank's engine roared while racing uphill. The Russians could be in that village up ahead. At the ridge's crest, they joined five other tanks. Spread before them lay the village, and in an instant, flashes erupted from the huts, hedges, and fences, and armor-piercing rounds whizzed toward the tanks. Several deafening crashes echoed, as anti-tank rounds struck the tank to Bix's right. He witnessed the turret cupola being torn off, taking the tank's commander with it. In rapid succession, two more tanks were hit. Captain Lochert's voice urgently crackled over the radio, fall back to the reverse slope. The tanks retreated to safety just in time. Where do we go from here, Sergeant? Corporal Kraus, the gunner, inquired. Bix responded, we won't make it through, unless we secure some air support. The moment we crest that hill, we're within their line of fire. Lochert Company occupied the battalion's left wing, and Sergeant Bix's Panzer III held the extreme left position. As the enemy fire from the village shifted towards the tanks on the right wing, muzzle flashes from those tanks indicated they were returning fire. Bix surveyed the terrain around him, his eyes locking onto a gully stretching to his left, reaching the village gardens. After a brief contemplation, he declared, we're going to make a covert approach into the village. That might stir up more problems, sir. Cautioned Lance Corporal Fink, the radio operator. But Sergeant Bix was resolute. Schwartz, start moving. Head down the slope and make a left into that gully. The driver reversed briefly, executed a turn, and entered the gully. The tank vanished from sight, as it advanced in the direction of the village. Bix anxiously awaited any sign of enemy fire, but there was nothing. It seemed that the Russians in the village couldn't spot them. Bix offered words of encouragement to his driver, as the tank emerged into the first garden of sunflowers. 
Out of nowhere, few Russian soldiers sprang to their feet and sprinted back towards the village. Almost simultaneously, the gunner and driver raised their voices, urgently exclaiming, enemy anti-tank gun up ahead, and to the left. Head directly toward it, Schwartz. Move past it swiftly, don't stop. Bix commanded. In a quick glance, Bix realized he had no time to fire. A tall wooden fence loomed directly ahead, and with a deafening crash, the tank burst through it. Bix instinctively ducked. Then, the Panzer III careered sideways into a bank and came to a halt. The tank leaned dangerously to one side, perilously close to tipping over. Once more, the driver and gunner shouted in unison. On the road ahead, a long column. Bix spotted the vehicles as well and swiftly directed, Schwartz, straighten out the tank first, and then head towards the road. The corporal skillfully managed to dislodge the tank from the bank, and the Panzer III eventually reached the road, that cut through the heart of the village. A kilometer or more behind them, the rest of the battalion was grappling unsuccessfully with the Russian anti-tank defenses. Their tank was the lone one that had managed to breach the enemy lines. We won't be able to advance any further from here, Fink announced, as he observed the enemy column through his sight. Sergeant Hermann Bix understood that retreating wasn't an option, since the Russian anti-tank guns were now positioned behind them. Their only hope was to press forward. When Bix looked behind, he spotted enemy vehicles in pursuit. Fink continued to provide a constant stream of target information over the intercom. Russian soldiers abandoned their vehicles, seeking refuge in the village buildings. A Soviet machine gun opened fire, its rattling bursts impacting the thin metal of the storage bin on the rear of the tank's turret. Load high explosive rounds, fire when ready. Bix ordered. The tank's cannon roared as it fired its first round. The high explosive shells slammed into the Soviet trucks, reducing them to heaps of mangled metal that quickly ignited into flames. Simultaneously, the tank's commander and Lance Corporal Fink unleashed a barrage of machine gun fire upon the enemy column, while the loader ducked every time enemy rounds struck the tank's armor. The straw roofs of the village houses caught fire, creating thick clouds of smoke that obscured Bix's vision, but also hidden the tank from view from behind. The blazing inferno above the enemy column expanded, and an ammunition truck exploded in a massive blast. The thunderous roar of the tank's cannon intermingled with the frenzied bursts of machine gun fire. Harpoon to commander, trapped within the enemy column. The message was accompanied by the relentless pounding of the heavy Maxim machine guns. In desperation, Bix attempted to contact the company for assistance, but the radio operator Fink hadn't deactivated the intercom, rendering communication with the company impossible. Then, Bix heard Captain Lochert's voice exclaim. Harpoon, what on earth are you up to? You're confusing the whole battalion. Finally, the radio operator realized the need to switch to external communications. Sergeant Bix was finally able to report, I'm in the center of the village, trapped within the Russian column filled with artillery. Please come to my aid immediately. Who in the world sent you in there, anyway? Swore Lochert. But Bix had no time to respond, as his crew urgently drew his attention to an enemy gun that had opened fire on them. The gunner swung the turret in the direction of the muzzle flash. Just as the anti-tank gun fired its second shot, the tank's cannon roared in response, and the resulting explosion took out the crew, manning the anti-tank gun. Bix caught Captain Lochert's order over the radio, all stations, move out. 
Their comrades were on the way. They were coming to rescue them from their perilous situation. The sergeant breathed a sigh of relief. The lone German tank pressed forward, reaching the far edge of the sprawling village. A pair of horse-drawn wagons blocked the street. Hold tight. Schwartz cautioned. With a splintering and cracking noise, the Panzer III rolled over the first wagon, crushing it beneath its tracks. Ahead of them, the second wagon erupted in a fiery explosion. If we roll over a cart like that and it's packed with mines, we'll be meeting in heaven. Peterman, the loader, shouted amidst the chaos of gunfire and exploding shells. Harpoon, Harpoon, this is the commander. Where are you? Captain Lotcher radioed. We can't locate you, fire a signal flare. Harpoon to commander, preparing to fire a green-white signal for marking my position, Bix replied, and he fired the two flares. Within moments, he heard his commander's voice once more. Are you really on the other side of the village? That seems impossible. Bix responded, I'll launch the green-white signal once more, and he fired two additional flares. Moments later, the voice of his commander came through, having recognized the situation. All stations, advance, Bix is alone up there. Infantry, move forward. Bix's tank descended from the street and ventured into the gardens, firing only when it was spotted by the enemy. Gunnar Kraus inquired, when will the others arrive? It shouldn't have taken this long. A brief pause in the gunfire allowed them, to hear the distinct sounds of tank cannons and the sharper cracks of anti-tank guns. Bix noted, they're taking on the anti-tank guns we bypassed. What Bix and his comrades were unaware of, was that the motorized infantry and motorcycle troops were simultaneously closing in on the village. At last, the first tank arrived. Captain Lochert steered his way up, and Bix, who had popped open his hatch, reported their situation. The captain shook his head, as he surveyed the damaged trucks and blazing houses. Bix, frankly I was about to reprimand you, but the situation here alters everything, he said. The captain then reported to the battalion that the situation was under control. The tanks retraced their path, heading back the way they had advanced. At their next stop, Bix and his fellow soldiers were informed that the infantry had captured 800 prisoners, and seized 60 undamaged vehicles. Additionally, they had successfully neutralized 12 anti-tank guns and 16 heavy guns. A remarkable feat it was, a lone German tank acting independently, managing to obliterate the entire vehicle and equipment inventory of a Russian motorized battalion. Major von Lochert recommended, Lance Sergeant Hermann Bix for the Iron Cross 1st Class, and his entire crew was honored with the Iron Cross 2nd Class. Bix received his well-deserved decoration on October 20, 1941, just 20 days after being promoted to Company Sergeant Major. Hermann Bix would go on to achieve numerous more victories, and eventually earn the prestigious, Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross.